on schedule. Look at that. As we go to our good friend, here we go on the magic and the goofiness of Skype, and we say good morning to Ward Q on rawmikerichards.com. For the first time, Warren, for the first time, baby. <laughs> Where is my heavy metal entrance? But, okay, okay. <laughs> this is exactly what I said you were going to say. I said that they, this is what's going to happen. He told me that I like said this, is gonna, this morning. Yeah. Because every time we play recognizable music, because of uh, being live on YouTube at the same time, they give me a, a, mm -hmm. a, a copyright infringement. They're like, Ooh. you can't play Tesla. You, <laughs> how dare you? You can't play Dawkins. You, you can't, can't play, play Dawkins. Oh, what was it? The uh, She Geo. was the something of the night. She was the engine of the night. Not the engine of the night. No, I can't think it was. Because no one would believe that you actually have a tremendous resume in the world of metal music. No one would believe it. No one believed. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love the metal music. 80s metal was, was just all about that, you know. And they, you know, I love the band. And I've gone to see, I, I saw Lemmy and Motorhead before he passed. Wow. Uh, uh, Rob Halford. Uh, oh my gosh, so many great uh, 80s metal bands. You know, maybe not the same to see them a little later in life as it was earlier, but, you know, ACDC comes to mind. What about well. Maiden? Have you, ever, have, you, have you ever seen Maiden live? Oh, oh, Maiden, I saw at the CNE, Canadian National Exhibition. I saw them back in the 80s, and uh, Guns N' Roses opened for them. Oh, the DNR, oh, oh, Axel wow. came out. He had the, you know, the long trench, and he had the, uh, the octagon hat, right? And, uh, or, or I don't know, or whatever. But you know, he he came out and and then Maiden played afterwards, and that was uh, that was the album where Appetite for Destruction was banned in Canada. Remember, and they came. Oh, because of the cover. Like this, right, right. Yeah. And it was this foggy, misty night, and I was tucked up at the top of the of the uh, back of the old CNE grandstand. Oh my God, it was just such a great experience, and to see Maiden too, who are just such great musicians right like really technically sound uh to see them play there i mean that to me was metal that that concert epitomizes what i remember of heavy metal in the 80s well moving from that technical aspect to the <laughs> pitching technical aspect of uh, francisco lariano last night not uh, not his best uh, first outing but I, I gotta admit though i mean when you look at what they've got out of francisco i mean what did they really expect because i go back and i said to, to dave just earlier on the show when he was at pittsburgh uh, as a gambling man, when Liriano was on the mound, I would say almost 90% of the time you want to be putting money on Francisco Liriano. But as we know, with pitchers' arms and the way the sport works, it doesn't last forever. And for what the Blue Jays have got from him so far, how much longer does this really last? Uh, last or are we saying the experiment is maybe over? Well, we need Russ Martin to really coach him along, right? That was, I think, to me, one of the biggest things. A great pitcher-catcher combination. Uh, Russ has been... Um, you know, he's been a differentiator, not only on every team that he's gone to, but he's also been a differentiator for Liriano. Uh, I think you've captured lightning in a bottle. How long does it last? Uh, you know, do you get through this season and hope that, you know, you can at least salvage something out of him? I, I, I listen, I mean, he's not by any stretch of the margin over the hill, but yet he has been off injured and, I've seen the velocity really down, guys. Like, that's the one thing for me is that he used to come up and absolutely intimidate with the fastball. He doesn't quite do that any longer. And, you know, <laughs> you can see when you don't place the fastball properly, Marco Estrada, and, you know, of course, Marco throws a lot slower than uh, Francisco does. But if you don't place the fastball and you can't command the fastball, uh, gentlemen, you're going to struggle as a major league pitcher. So to me, that was always his best pitch with good movement on it. And if you're the Blue Jays, you're hoping that you can at least milk the best of him for the remainder of this year. And then, guys, depending on where this team sits at the trade deadline, it could look a lot different next year or even the back half of the season. Yeah, it certainly can, Warren. Great talking to you this morning. Uh, kind of curious on your thoughts of Kevin Pillar. Uh, he started off gangbusters, especially the first six to eight weeks of the season. But for my money, the last month of the season, uh, he's kind of, tailed big time. I mean, that batting average is now under 250. The on base is at 300 even. Is it time to consider, if you're John Gibbons, is it time to consider maybe moving Pilar out of that leadoff spot? But if you do, it's not like they have a lot of uh, candidates to fill that spot because it's almost been a little bit of an Achilles heel with this club, not finding and not having a true leadoff hitter. 
Yeah, great chatting with you too, David. Uh, and thanks for reaching out too last night. That's awesome. Glad to be on with you guys. And uh, I, I would say, I mean, you might see Bautista in the uh, leadoff position tonight. He's done that before. He's excelled there. But, you know, I take it back to Pilar. Uh, he might wind up being that 250, 260 hitter. Uh, he will chase a lot of pitches. And that's the one thing, you know, the strikeout levels. Guys, you know, uh, I watch and listen to a lot of baseball. Uh, isn't it interesting now that Pilar is 13 for his last 98? Do we not think that there's something to do with that Atlanta incident with the homophobic slur? Yeah. That he's gone an absolute slide since then? I mean, guys, come on. You can't. That has to impact you as an individual, as a person. And, uh, you know, I, I know you try to brush it off. But it, to me, looks like, because I counted the games, so roughly at 29 games, since that happened, and you look at the you know the hundred at bats, if you averaged in around you know four at bats per game, that kind of puts him right in that threshold. So to me, these are things that you will never see, and people might not talk about. But I can tell you the feelings that happen, and how momentum can change for an individual, and how negative things can start to creep in, especially sentiment. And uh, uh, trust me, you know he hears it on the road. Uh, you go into Yankee Stadium, you're going to hear a lot of nasty things uh, if you're Kevin Pillar. So, you know, you have to have thick skin. And I think he does, but you're right. It really has been, um, it's been a tough stretch for him over the past month. We're in conversation with Warren Sockew here on rawmikerichards.com talking uh, Major League Baseball, Blue Jays. And uh, Warren, if we're taking a look at this team as we start to head into July. So it's starting to get a little thick right now. You're starting to actually sort of formulate where, I guess, if your ownership, if your management, where your team is. And the Blue Jays, to me, I think, as I said to Dave the other day, it feels like if this, if the Blue Jays were a television series, then of this current group, this is the last season of this show. Is this <laughs> After then the weird characters come out, maybe there's a couple of spinoffs or something, or the show you know goes in and comes back with a new name or something. But I really don't see, if you're a Blue Jay fan, really wanting them to be buyers. Now, I get everyone wants to make the playoffs, but if I'm looking at it from a monetary situation of where I want to be and I, and I look what's ahead of me when you got teams like... You know where they are in the, sort of their cycle of of their organization, that being the Yankees and and the Bo Sox. I better be and get with that cycle soon. And I don't think I can do it by going halfway and, and buying some players to be a bubble team, maybe get into the wild card. I just don't see as a Blue Jay fan that that's advantageous. At some point, you have to look to the future, and I think the future could be in selling the guys you got who, who are worth value. What do you think? Don't kid yourself. This is a smart front office. You look at. Uh... Ross Atkins, uh, Wake Forest University grad, by the way, just, uh, you know, pumping my deacons right there. Uh, <laughs> you look at Mark Shapiro, Ivy League, right? Oh, yeah, These are smart yeah. individuals, okay? You're right. Uh, I, I think you absolutely hit it right there, Mike, with the fact that you need to keep up with organizations that have built robust minor league systems. Boston, New York. New York turned it around in one season with those two trades, uh, you know, with those big uh, relievers, right? You look at Andrew Miller trade and uh, Aldous Chapman. Uh, restocking. Guys, you got, I know two lows. That, that contract did $20 million per uh, year for a 32-year-old shortstop. Uh, you look at Russ Martin. Uh, yes, he's Canadian, but... You know, do you, do you, uh, you know, that Russ is a tough one, right? Because I, I, I just believe that, you know, he, he's a great fit here right now, but you got to start to, you got to get something behind him in terms of some catching capabilities. Um, wh what are you going to do? You're probably going to, you're going to keep Sanchez and you're going to keep Stroman, I believe. But then everybody else is kind of out there. Marco's got uh, free agency. I think you're right. I think there are two games back in the wild card. You're going to give it that six weeks right now, and six weeks is going to tell a lot, guys, because when I look at this schedule, it's not going to get any easier. When I look at the end of June, you know, they're on the road now in Texas. Then they go to KC. Okay, so that you should win. But then you come home, Baltimore. Then you've got Boston. Then you've got the Yankees on the road. Then you've got Houston at home. All teams ahead of you right now, and Houston, the best team in baseball, all-star break, you catch a breather. Guys, you go on the road for 10 days right after the all-star break. Detroit, Boston, and Cleveland. And Edwin's heating up in Cleveland, so don't think he won't be made motivated. Guys, this is, this is the answer right here. This next month of baseball, it will tell you 
whether where this team's going to go, and it all depend on their record. And I would even still say uh, that you want to catch lightning in the bottle and you want to try to make the playoffs. But boy, is what's the sacrifice you're going to make just to try to make one more push? Warren, I'm going to give you five statements. I, I want you to tell me if you're buying the statement, as in, yes, I believe in what I'm hearing, or if you're going to sell the statement and say, no, this is clearly not going to happen. Uh, let's start off with the Minnesota Twins. Two games above 500. They are in contention. Are you buying or selling that the Minnesota Twins are a postseason team? <laughs> a postseason team. So that could be wow. wild card or division winner. Ooh. Yeah, that's a, okay. I am not buying that they're a postseason team. I'm buying that they're in there, but we're still too early. And yes, uh, two games above, as you talked about, is a great achievement for Paul Molitor and crew. But to me, that uh, <laughs> that's a weak division, and I still think that there's a lot of opportunity. So I'm not buying that one. I'm selling. Buying or selling, the Houston Astros will win the entire American League and represent the league at the World Series. Yeah, I'm buying that. Yeah, I'm 100%. buying that too. Milwaukee Brewers currently first place in the Central Division, buying or selling that the Brewers, just like the Twins, are a postseason team. No, Joe Madden selling. Joe Madden's got the Cubs playing their half game back. Sorry, uh, Milwaukee. I, I love you. you got a nice stadium, but uh, that's about <laughs> it. And you got Eric Thames, but that's it. I will agree with you on that stadium. It is uh, Miller Park is fantastic. <laughs> buying or selling, the Colorado Rockies will best the Dodgers at the end, and win the West. Oh, 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 oh. oh and don't forget the Arizona Diamondbacks. I <laughs> am going to say, oh, wow. Holy cow, buying or selling that one, I'm going to buy it. I like Colorado. There's some mojo going on there Ooh. in the Rockies. Uh, I'm buying it. I'm yeah. going to buy it. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I got a really good feeling about that team. Yeah, and they're and they're they're playing some awesome baseball. Final question, Warren, for you from me: New York Yankees will win the American League East Division when everything's said and done in September. Buy or sell? Mm, I'm selling. I'm saying Yanks lost last seven in a row, even though Aaron Judge, uh, you know, 24 home runs leads uh, major leagues right now. Uh, I, I think to me, it, it, they're still, although they're right there. I think Boston's uh, starting to build momentum, and uh, I, I think it's going to be, it's all starting pitching with the Yankees. So I'm going to sell that there's not enough starting pitching yet for the Yankees to, to win the American League East. Okay, I better, uh, you know, I did some research. Uh, <laughs> I did some research last night, too, you know, Warren. I, I, okay, so here, here's your buying and selling. Uh, uh, Ronnie James Dio is the greatest rock singer of his era. <laughs> buying. Buy. Oh, okay. There we go. There's a good one. Uh, okay, here's another one. I'm buying that. Um, Tesla is a better band <laughs> than Cinderella. Oh, he's think wow, about that. that's really tough. Yeah. Actually, uh, Tesla is better than Cinderella. I yes. love Cinderella. Man, I guess you can't call a tie. So I am going to say. From a band perspective, Tesla is a better orchestrated band and a better compilation musical band than Cinderella was the massive hair band they were. I, you know what? What are you people? There you go. There who, you go. Who can do, do you like that? Is uh, that a great analysis? I, I thought Tesla it was great because Cinderella. Because that's that's how I would say it the other day. <laughs> Warren, I mean, Warren, you are a five tool baseball yes, analyst. Yeah. You could you could basically do anything <laughs> on this show. You know what? Tomorrow if we're talking about. I don't know, fixing the uh, travel problem in Toronto. I think I'm calling you yeah. before I'm calling Tori. Yeah, you could run for office. You've got that nice, clean-cut look. No one would ever know the, the <laughs> sleaze and disgustingness well, that probably as, exists. As long as you don't call me a five-star tool, though. No, 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 yeah. no. Peter, Peter North was called that once, and he didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Warren, so great to hear your voice. You know, we got to do this on a regular basis because I just love having you on. It's been fantastic here this morning. Guys, I'm all yours. I'll do this anytime. Uh, you guys are the best, man. I'm, Mike, I'm so happy you and David are, are reunited. Uh, really, really thankful to be on. Uh, call me anytime, guys. Okay? Uh, that's, that's fantastic. Thanks, partner. Take care, Warren. All right, guys. Ciao. That is Warren Saku uh, joining us here uh, today, and courtesy of Skype. That's yes. what the weird music is when and, you hear that. And former Winnipeg Gold Eye of the, uh, of the AA Northern League. Best friends. Yep. <laughs>